still nothing. Nothing this morning, this evening, nothing. Nothing for three days. The messengers go, the messengers return. He twitches the head, they say nothing. They've looked everywhere. Nothing more to do. Why worry now? Let's wait. Maybe he'll reappear the same way he disappeared. I saw him leave the palace. He had a strange look on his face. I was there too. I asked him, what was the matter? Did he answer? A single word. Nothing. That's disturbed. Oh, come on now. All young people are like that. Yes, that's true. Boys will be boys. They'll get over it. You think? Let's hope he forgets her. You lose one, you get ten more. <laughs> Who says it's a matter of love? And what else? Depression, perhaps? Or simply an aversion to looking at you all every day? I swear. Our fellow men would be easier to endure if they could just change their faces from time to time. But no. The menu never changes, always the same chopped meat. I'd rather think it's love that is much more comforting. And more romantic, above all, so much more romantic. That's the kind of illness that hits both the smart and the stupid. In any case, fortunately, sorrows are not eternal. Are you able to suffer for more than a year? Me? No. Well, life would be impossible. You see, no one has that power. Last year, I lost my wife. I cried a lot, and then I forgot. From time to time, I still feel a pang, but all in all, it is nothing. Well, that's because nature knows how to take care of us. And yet, when I look at you, I get the impression she sometimes misses the ah! mark. Well? Still nothing. Calm down, gentlemen, calm down. We must keep up appearances. If the Roman Empire, that's us. If we lose face, the empire loses its head. This is not the time for that, no. But first, let's have lunch. Then the empire will be better served. A bird in my hand. I don't like this. Everything was going too well. Emperor's perfect. Yes, he was exactly what we needed, rigorous and inexperienced. But really, what's the matter? And why all this moaning and groaning? There's nothing that says he can't go on. He was in love with Drusilla, that's true. But she was his sister after all. Sleeping with her was already a lie. But turning all of Rome on its head simply because she is dead, that is going too far. Mm, baby, I don't like this. And him running off like this tells me Nothing, because with this smoke, there's fire. In any case, reasons of state forbidden incest to take on the aspect of a tragedy. Incest, okay, but no publicity. You know, by its very nature, incest always makes some noise. <laughs> the bed creaks, so to speak. But anyway, who says it's about Drusilla? What else then? Dr. Bennett, misfortune is like marriage. You think you're choosing. Turns out you're chosen. There's nothing for it. That's the way it is. Our Caligula is miserable. Maybe he himself doesn't know why. He probably felt trapped. So he fled. We all would have done the same. Look, me, the one who's talking to you. If I could have chosen my father, I'd have never been born. Well, nothing yet. Some peasants thought they saw him last night running through the storm. Mm, that makes three days already, doesn't it, Scipio? Yes. I was there, following him as usual. He approached Drusilla's corpse. He touched her with two fingers, and for a while he seemed to be deep in thought, and then he turned and walked out steadily enough. Since then, no one can find him. Mm, that boy was always too in love with literature. Of course, at his age. But not at his rank. An emperor artist is just not suitable. I mean, we've had one or two, of course. There are bad apples oh, everywhere. But the old ones had the good taste to remain civil servants. That made things easier. Well, because each to his own profession. What can we do, Carrier? Nothing. Let us wait. If he doesn't come back, he will have to be replaced. Between ourselves, emperors abound. But not so many with the right sort of character. And if he comes back in an ugly mood? Oh, for God's sake, he'll, he's just a child. We'll make him see reason. And if he's deaf to reason. OK, then. Didn't I once write a treatise on coup d'etat? Of I, course, uh, if it comes to that. I prefer to remain at peace with my books. Please excuse me. He's offended. But it's a child, and children stick together. Mm -hmm. Stick together or not, they still all get older. <laughs> Caligula has been spotted. 
Είναι πάρα σκάρδι. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Halicon. You seem tired. I walked a lot. Yes, you were gone a, a long time. It was difficult to find what, what? what I wanted. What was that? The moon. Oh. To do what with? Well, it, it's one of the things I don't have. Oh. And now, is everything fixed? No. I wasn't able to get it. That's annoying. Yes. It's because of that that I'm so tired. Uh, Helicon? Yes, guys? You think I'm mad. <laughs> you know very well I never think I'm far too intelligent for that. Yes. Now, listen. <laughs> I'm not mad. In fact, I've never been more rational. It's this simple, really. I I've suddenly felt the need for the impossible. Things as they are don't seem acceptable to me. Well, that's a common opinion. True. But I never knew it before. Now I do. Consequently, I need the moon, or happiness, or immortality. Something demented, perhaps, but something not of this world. Hmm. It seems reasonable enough, but generally no one can have it all. You know nothing about it. It's because no one ever goes all the way through with it that no one's ever had it. Uh, maybe it's enough to remain logical to the end. I know what you're thinking, Helicon. What a fuss over a woman's death. But that's not it. True enough, I seem to recall a woman died a few days ago, a woman I loved, but what is love? Not much. That death is nothing. Nothing but the signal of a truth, which means that I must have the moon. It's a simple truth, quite clear. A little stupid and brutal, perhaps, but difficult to discover and a heavy load to bear. What truth is that, then, guys? Men die, and they are not happy. Anyway, guys, it's a truth everyone learns to live with. Look around you. This truth of yours won't keep them from their lunch. Yes! Everything around me is a lie! But I want them to live in the truth. And I know just what it would take to make them live in the truth. Because I know what they're missing, Helicon. They have no understanding. What they need is a teacher who knows what he's talking about. Do not be offended by what I am about to tell you, but first you should rest a little. That's impossible, Helicon. That will never be possible. Why not? Because if I sleep, who will bring me the moon? That's true. Listen, Helicon. I hear footsteps, voices. Say nothing. Forget you've seen me. Got it. And Helicon. Yes, guys. Help me from now on. No reason not to, but I know very little and few things interest me. What can I help you with? The impossible. I'll do my best. There's no one there. Have you not seen him, Helicon? No. Helicon, did he really not say anything to you before he ran off? 
I am not his confidant. I am his spectator. That's why, then. Oh, I beg you. Dear Zonia, Caius is an idealist. He follows an idea, and where it leads him, no one can predict. It's the same as the state he still does not yet understand. As for me, it's because I don't care about anything, but if he decided he wanted to understand with his good-hearted nature, he's capable of caring about everything. But if you'll permit me, lunch calls. A century saw him go by. But all of Rome sees Caligula everywhere, and Caligula indeed sees only his idea. What idea? Well, how should I know, Scipio? Drusilla? It's true. Who can tell? It's true he loved her. It's true. It's hard to see one die today whom only yesterday you held in your arms. And you? Oh, Miami's old mistress. Say, Sonia, we have to save him. So you love him? I love him. He's been good to me. He encouraged me in some of the things he said I cannot forget. He said life isn't easy, but there's religion, love, and art to carry us through. He often said the only wrong we do is to make others suffer. He wanted to be a righteous man. He was a child. I have never had any god but my own body, and that is the god that I pray to today to bring Gaius back to me. <clears throat> uh, we've been looking for you, Caesar. I can see. We, that is we. What do you want? Uh, we've been worried about you, Caesar. By what right? Well, as you know, you need to sign off on certain questions regarding the public treasury. The treasury? Right, that's true, the treasury, that's what's important? Yes. Isn't that right, my love? The treasury, that's what's truly important. No, Caligula, it's a side issue. Uh, but that's because you know nothing about it. Everything is important. Our finances, our public morality, provisioning the army, foreign policy, and our agrarian laws. Everything is of the utmost importance, I tell you. And everything is just as important as everything else. The grandeur of Rome right down to your arthritis attacks. Fine. I'll take care of all of it. Listen up, steward. We're all ears. You're loyal to me, aren't you? Caesar. Very well. I have a plan to give you. Uh, we're going to revolutionize the whole political economy in just two moves. I shall explain the plan to you, steward when the patricians are gone. <laughs> Listen well. First off, all patricians, all anyone in the empire who has any sort of fortune, small or large, it's exactly the same, shall be required to disinherit their children and write a new will leaving everything to the state. But Caesar... Yeah, I have not yet given you permission to speak. We shall cause these persons to die in the order of an arbitrarily established list. From time to time we may modify the order of this list, always arbitrarily, and we shall inherit their fortunes. What has come over you? The order of the executions, really, is of no importance. Or better said, they are all of equal importance from which it follows that none of them are important. Take note, moreover, that it is no more immoral to steal directly from the citizens than it is to slip indirect taxation into the prices of commodities they cannot do without. To govern is to steal. Everyone knows that. But it's a question of form. Myself, I shall steal openly. You will carry out these orders without delay. Uh, the wills are to be signed this evening by all residents of Rome, within one month at most, by all provincials. Send out the messengers! It seems that you don't realize Listen that. up, you imbecile. If the treasury is important, human life is not. That's clear. 
All who think like you do must agree with this reasoning and hold their lives to be worthless because they consider money to be everything. Moreover, I have decided to be logical, and since I hold the power, you will find that logic will cost you. Caesar, my Shh. good intentions are not in question, I swear. Nor mine. You can believe it. The proof is that I consent to espouse your point of view and hold that the treasury is an object of worship. In other words, thank me, for I am playing your game and with your deck. I shall exterminate the opposition and all contradictions. If necessary, I shall begin with you. You have three seconds to disappear. I'm counting. One, two. You are not the man I know. You're kidding, aren't you? Not exactly, Cezania. It's a teaching moment. It's impossible, Gaius. Exactly. I don't understand. Something. Exactly. It's about what is not possible, or better said, it's about making possible what is not. But that's a game with no limits. That's a madman's game. No, Scipio. It's an emperor's prerogative. I at last come to an understanding of the uses of my power to give the impossible a chance. Today, and for all of time to come, there are no limits to my liberties. I'm not sure if that's something to celebrate, Gaius. Well, neither am I, but I suppose we'll find out. I deserve your returns. I hope that you are in good health. My health thanks you. Get out, Korea. I don't want to look at you. I'm surprised, Gaius. Don't be. I don't like men of letters. I can't stand their lies. If we lie, it's often without knowing it. I plead not guilty. A lie is never innocent. Yours claim that people and things are important. That's what I cannot forgive you for. Still, if we must plead a case for this world, we want to live in it. Don't plead anymore. The case has been heard. This world is of no importance, and he who recognizes that is a free man. That's exactly why I hate you, Caria, because you are not free. In fact, in the whole Roman Empire, I am the only one who is. Rejoice, for unto you at last an emperor has come who can show you how to be free. Leave, Caria. And you too, Scipio, for I scoff at friendship. Go! Proclaim to all of Rome that freedom has finally been granted her, and therewith begins a great ordeal. You're crying. Yes, Cesarvia. What, what has changed in you? Though you loved Jusilla, you loved me and plenty of others at the same time. Her death was not enough to have driven you for three days and three nights into the countryside to bring you back with this hostile look on your face. Who said anything about Drusilla, you fool? Can you not imagine that a man can weep for something besides love? Well, forgive me, Gaius, but I am trying to understand. Men weep because things are not as they ought to be. Leave it, Sisonia. But stay here with me. I'll do as you wish. At my age, one knows that life is not good. What an evil on the earth. Why would you want to add to it? Huh? You can't understand. What's the difference? Maybe I'll find my way out of this, but I feel rising inside of me some beings without a name. Oh, what could I do against them, Cezonia? I, I knew a man could be desperate, but I had no idea what that word meant. Like everyone else, I believed it was the soul that suffered. But no, 
It's an illness of the body. My skin feels wrong, my chest, my limbs. My head is hollow and my heart aches. And the worst thing is this taste in my mouth. Not blood, not death, not fever, but all of it at once. If I so much as move my tongue, the world goes black and these loathsome creatures attack me. How hard it is, how bitter to become a man. You need to sleep. Sleep for a long time, relax, and don't think. I will watch for you. And when you wake up, your world will have recovered its flavor. Then you can use your power the better to love whatever still can be loved. Possibilities, too, deserve to be given a chance. But I'd have to sleep. I'd have to let myself go. That's impossible. That's what we think when, when we are utterly fatigued. In time, your hand will be steady again. But one has to know where to put it. What good is a steady hand to me? What is my thundering power for if I cannot make the sun set in the east? If I cannot lessen the world's misery and make all men live and not die? No. Sazonia, makes no difference if I sleep or wake, if I have no power to change the order of things. Oh, but that is the one to be a god. I know no worse folly. You too. You think I'm mad. Still, what is a god to me that I should want to compare myself to him? What I want with all my might today is above the gods. I declare a kingdom where the impossible is king. Oh, you cannot make the sky not the sky. A beautiful face become ugly. A human heart insensible. I want to merge the sea with the sky. Meld ugliness and beauty. Make laughter burst from misery. You will not be able to deny love. Love? Sazonia, I've learned that it's nothing. That other one is the thing, the public treasury. It all begins with that. It is only now that I shall begin to live. To live, Sazonia, it is the opposite of love. It is I who tell you this. And it is I who invite you to a celebration without end. The world on trial, the most gorgeous show. And for that, I need people. Spectators, witnesses, the guilty. Bring me the guilty, and they are all guilty. I want the guilty. And my public, spectators, witnesses, the accused, all sentenced to death without a hearing. I'm going to show them something they've never seen before. The only free man in the empire. And you, Sazonia, you will obey me. You will be my constant helper. This is going to be great. Swear to me that you will help me, Sazonia. I don't need to swear because I love you. You will do all that I tell you to all do. All of it, Caligula, but stop. You will be cruel. Cruel. Cold and implacable. Implacable. You too will suffer. Yes, and I'm gonna go insane. Come here, all of you. Approach, I order you to approach. Look, nothing. Nothing anymore, nothing. Not a trace. All the faces gone. And do you know what's left? Come, look. Come closer. Look! Caligula! Caligula. For three years now. He calls me little lady. He ridicules me for death. For 
three years now. He makes us run alongside his sedan chair in the evenings when he goes out to the country. Yes, and he says that button is good for our whole health. For three years now. There's no excuse for any of this. No, we cannot pardon that. Patricius, he confiscated all your goods. Scipio, he killed your father. Lucius, he kidnapped your wife, and now he's making her work in this public whorehouse. Lepidus, he killed your son. Will you all allow this? For myself, I already made my mind up. It's either take the chance or live an intolerable life. And given that choice, I cannot and will not hesitate. When he killed my father, he made my mind up for me. Will you all still waver? We are with you. He's given us seats at the circus to the plebes. He's baited us against the uh, circus so he can push us even more afterwards. Ah, he's just a miserable slob. A cynic. A clown. And he's impotent for three years now. So where are you off to like that? To the palace. Oh, I got that. But do you think they'll let you enter? It's not about asking permission. Oh, you certainly are. Of course, all of a sudden, you may at least have your leave to sit down in my own house. This is not as easy as you think, my friend. The, the fear that animates you is no substitute for courage and composure. This is all premature. If you are not with us, get out. But hold your tongue. I think, however, that I am with you. But not for the same reason. Enough of this chatter. Right. Enough chatter. I want things to be clear. Because even though I'm with you, I'm not for you. That's because your method doesn't strike me as the right one. You haven't recognized your real enemy. You think he has only petty motives? He has only weighty motives. And you are in for a big fall. Learn first to see him as he is. Then maybe you can fight him better. You see him as he is. He's a maniacal tyrant. That's not certain. Mad emperors, we've known a few. But this one is not so mad. What I detest in him is he knows what he wants. He wants to put us all to death. No, that's just a byproduct. But he is putting his passion to the service of a, of a higher and deadlier force that threatens our most profound beliefs. This is not the first time we've known a man to wield unlimited power. But it's the first time he does so without limit, to the point of negating our humanity and the world. There. That's what appalls me and what I want to fight. Losing my life is no big thing, and I'm, I'm ready for that when the time comes. But watching the meaning of life be drained away, the purpose of our existence disappear, that is intolerable. We cannot live without purpose. Vengeance is a purpose. Yes, and I'll share it with you. But it won't be to avenge your petty humiliations. It's to fight against a grand idea whose triumph would mean the end of the world. Oh, I've been continent of turning his ridicule on you, but I cannot accept that Caligula should do whatever he dreams up in everything he dreams of. He transforms his philosophy into cadavers. When to our sorrow it's a consistent philosophy, we must stamp out what we cannot refute. Well, we have to act. We have to act. unjust power by attacking it head on. Not now, while it's at its height. Tyranny can be resisted, but with, with uninterested wickedness, one must resort to guile. Give him enough rope. Wait until his logic leads him to madness. But once again, I speak only truth when I say I am with you only up to a point. Afterwards, I will not serve any of your interests. I wish only to find peace in a world we make once again coherent. It is not ambition that moves me to act, but a rational fear, a fear of his inhuman lyricism, next to which my life is worthless. I think I understand, at least a little. But you, like us, must hold that the foundations of our society are shaken. 
family is being torn apart, respect for work is being lost, the entire country is given over to blasphemy. Virtue calls upon us to save it. Can we refuse to listen? No. Yeah. Fellow conspirators, can we allow that Patricians be forced to run alongside Caesar's sedan chair. Can you allow him to call you my sweetie? And allow him to kidnap your wife? And steal your children and your money. Rare, you have spoken well. And it is a good thing too that you have calmed this down. It is still too early for us to act today. The people would still be against us. Will you watch with us for the moment to move? Yes. Let's let Caligula continue. Better yet, let's urge him on. We'll organize his follies. And the day will come when he stands alone amongst the empire full of the dead and the families of those dead. Nothing. Oh, come on. That's not true. What's not true? <laughs> you weren't fighting. Okay, we weren't fighting. It might be a good idea to put this place back in order. Caligula has a horror of disorder. To make him do something out of character. But after all, what have we done? Uh, nothing. That's just it. It's amazing being so trivial that ends up becoming intolerable. Put yourself in Caligula's place. Now, naturally, you've been plotting a little now, haven't you? But that's not true. How can he think it? He doesn't think he knows. But at the end of it, I imagine he desires that a little. Come, my sweetie. We'll help you put things back in order. Correa, we've decided to enjoy your hospitality. Mucius, I shall permit myself to invite your wife. Gentlemen, you know that the state finances have held up only because they've gotten in the habit of doing so. As of yesterday, that habit no longer suffices. I am therefore under the heartbreaking necessity of downsizing personnel. In a spirit of sacrifice, which I'm sure you'll appreciate, I have decided to reduce my household staff, free some of my slaves, and assign you to serve me. Ha! You may now set the table and serve the food. Come, gentlemen, a little goodwill. Besides, you'll see it's much easier to climb down the social ladder than it is to climb back up it. What's the punishment reserved for lazy slaves? Flogging, I believe. Have a little care, gentlemen. Methodically above all, methodically. Helicon, I think they're out of practice. The truth is, I don't think they've ever been in practice, except in giving blows or commands. Patience is all there is for it. As you well know, it only takes a day to make a senator, but it takes six years to train a worker. Well, I'm afraid it may take 20 to make a worker from a senator. Well, as I said, the only thing we do is be patient. I tell myself, hey, at least they've got talent. Servitude will suit them. Look, they're even starting to sweat. That's a first step. No, let's not ask too much of them. It's not that bad. And then a moment of justice is always good. Speaking of which, we should hurry. An execution awaits my presence. Uh, Rufius is in, is in luck that I got hungry so suddenly. Rufius, that's the night he must die. None of you asks why he must die. I see you've grown more intelligent. Uh, you've understood at last that it's not necessary to have done anything in order to die. 
Soldiers, I am pleased with you. Isn't that right, Holocron? For sure. What an army. But if you want my opinion, I think they've grown too intelligent, and now they won't want to go into battle. But if they get any smarter, the empire might fall apart. Perfect. Uh, we shall be seated. Go on, sit anywhere. No protocol. bad mood. Could that be because I had your younger son killed? On the contrary, Caesar. Uh, Lepidus, no one is dearer to me than you are. Shall we have a good laugh together? Tell me a good story. C C Caius, fine, fine, I'll tell one. But you'll laugh, won't you? Uh, if only for the sake of your other son. Anyway, you're not in a bad mood. On the... On the... Come, Lepidus. On the contrary, Caesar. That was quick. Listen up, then. Once upon a time, there was a poor emperor whom nobody liked. He who loved Lepidus had that man's younger son killed in order to root his love for Lepidus out of his heart. Naturally, it's not true. But funny, no? You're not laughing. No one is laughing. I want everyone to laugh. You, Lepidus, and all of the others, stand up. Stand up and laugh! <laughs> We're waiting. My wife? Well, I love her. <laughs> <laughs> of course, my friend, of course. But that's so ordinary. In fact, when I first came in, you were all plotting, weren't you? Cooking up a little conspiracy? Caius, how can you? No matter, sweetie. Old age has its privilege. No matter, really. Anyway, you're all incapable of courageous action. It, it just occurred to me I have some matters of state to settle, but first, let us allow them to have their way, these imperious desires nature produces in us.
Oh, Mucius. I'd like another glass of this excellent wine. <laughs> well then, Cario, tell me why you're fighting this oh, now. Oh, dear Cecilia, it all came about as we were disputing whether or not poetry should be bloodthirsty. That's very interesting, but still above my woman's understanding. Yet I am amazed that your passion for art brings you to the point of exchanging blows. Oh, certainly, as Caligula has said, there is no a deep passion without an element of cruelty. Mm. Nor love without a touch of the great. Mm. There is some truth in that. What do you think, the rest of you? Well, Caligula's a forceful psychologist. He spoke eloquently about courage. He should write up all his ideas. That would be invaluable. Not to mention it would keep him busy, because it's clear that he requires more diversion. And you will be delighted to know that he has thought of that, and he is now writing his great treatise. Mucius, I return your wife. You have her back. But excuse me, I have orders to give. This great treatise will rank among the most celebrated Mucius. No doubt about it. And what is that about, Sazonia? Oh, that's over my head. Well, as Christ said, it will keep them occupied. Oh, true, sweetie. But what will doubtless stick in your throat is the book's title. What is it? The Double-Edged Sword. So sorry, gentlemen, but affairs of state are so demanding. Steward, you will close the public granaries. I've just signed the decree. You'll find it in that room. But Caesar, famine starts tomorrow. The people I like say it. famine starts tomorrow. Everyone knows famine. It's a bore. Tomorrow, everyone's bored. And I shall stop the boring times when I feel like it. After all, there are only so many ways to try one's freedom, and you can only be free at someone else's expense. It's, it's a pain, but it's normal. Apply that thought to jealousy, and you'll see what I mean. Still, it's awful to be jealous, to be wounded in your vanity, to see your wife, and you can only imagine it. Let us eat, gentlemen. Do you know we've been hard at work along with Helicon? We've been drafting a little treatise on execution uh, about which you'll give us your opinion. Uh, assuming anybody asks your advice. Oh, be generous, Helicon. Let them share our little secrets. Give them section three, paragraph one. Execution. Stays and delivers. It is universal. It strengthens. It is just in its application as it is in its intention. A man dies because he is guilty. He is guilty because he is one of Caligula's subjects. It follows that everyone is guilty. We thus conclude everyone must die. It is then a matter of time and patience. Well, what do you all think of it? Patience, it's a nice touch. Allow me to tell you, gentlemen, that's what I admire most in all of you. You may go now, Korea has no more need of you. But Morea stays, and Glepidus, and Sazonia. I want to talk of the organization of my public whorehouse. It worries me. If we may be of service, uh, what seems to be the problem? Personnel, no good. Uh, no, but the income is no good. Have to raise the prices. Morea, you've just missed a chance to keep your mouth shut. Given your age, such questions do not concern you. I wasn't asking your advice. Then why did you have me stay, Gaius? Because momentarily I shall have needed some passion less advice. If I may speak to this with some passion, I'd say that raising the prices would be a mistake. Naturally, we shall see. 
I've already explained my plan to Sazonia, who will lay it out for you. As for me, I've grown drowsy. I, I've had too much wine. It's very simple. Caligula has created a new Medal of Honor. I don't see the connection. Oh, but there is one. This new distinction will be known as the Order of Civic Heroism. It will be bestowed on the citizens who will have made the most frequent visit to Caligula's public whorehouse. Brilliant. I agree. I forgot to mention that this honor will be bestowed monthly upon verification of the entry tickets, and the citizen who has not been verified at the end of 12 months will be exiled or executed. <laughs> Why? Or executed. Because Caligula says it doesn't matter which, as long as he can choose. Bravo! And the public treasury fills up again. And always in the most ethical manner. No death will. For we have found it is far more beneficial to tax vice that it is to hold virtue for ransom like they do in republics. Maria, what are you drinking? <coughs> it's asthma medication, Gaius. No, it's an antidote for poison. <laughs> Not at all. Oh, you'll laugh when I cough at night, and I've been dreading it this way for a long time. <laughs> So you're afraid of being poisoned? My asthma. No. Let's call things by their right names. You believe I will poison you. You suspect me. You spy on me. <laughs> no, my they lit by all the gods. You suspect me. In a certain way, you defy me. Answer me. If you are taking an antidote, it follows that you infer my intention of poisoning you. Yes, I, I mean, no! And from the moment you began to believe that I will poison you, you've been doing what you can to oppose my decision. That makes two crimes and a dilemma you cannot get out of. Either I never did intend to poison you and you suspect me unjustly. <laughs> me, your emperor. Or I did mean to. And you, you insist. I've been doing what you can to oppose my decision. What do you think of that logic? It's rigorous, but it doesn't apply here. A third crime? Oh. You think me an imbecile? No. Of the three crimes, only one does you honor, and that's the second. Because from the moment you infer my intention and you oppose it, that implies you are in revolt. You are a leader of men, a revolutionary. <laughs> I like you a lot, Moran. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> that is why you shall be condemned for your second crime, and not the others. You shall die like a man for having rebelled. There's no need to thank me. It's quite natural. Here, take this poison. Was it an antidote for poison? No, Caligula. It was asthma medication. Doesn't matter. Comes to the same thing. A little sooner, a little later. What shall we do? Oh, first, get rid of it, I think. It's just too hideous. We must act quickly. We must be 200. What? 
Yes. You hate him? Yes. You want to kill him? Yes. Well, then why are you telling me? Because I fear no one. Kill him or be killed. Those are the two ways to end it. Besides, you will not betray me. No, I won't betray you. But I want to tell you something. Or rather, speak to that which is best in me. What's best in me is my loathing. Just listen to me. What I have to say is both obvious and hard to grasp. But it is the thing, if only listened to, will bring about the only definitive revolution in this world. Well, tell me. Not yet. First. Picture your father's face contorted in agony as his tongue was being torn out. Picture that mouth full of blood and hear his cries like a beast being tortured. Yes. Now picture Caligula. Yes. Now listen. Try to understand him. Caligula is coming back. Won't you go eat, poet? Hell, come! Help me! <laughs> Too dangerous, my dove. And I know nothing about poetry. You can help me. You know many things. I know. The days go by. And it's time to eat. I also know you could kill Caligula, and he wouldn't blame you. <gasps> ah, it's you. Long time since I've seen you. What are you doing, still writing? Would you show me some of your more recent poems? I have written some poems, Caesar. On what subject? I don't know, Caesar. Nature, I think. Ah, great subject and vast. What has she done to you, nature? She consoles me for not being Caesar. Uh -huh. Do you believe she can console me for being Caesar? Of course, she's healed worse wounds than that. Wounds? You say that spitefully. Could that be because I had your father killed? You don't know how just that word is, wounds! There's nothing like hatred to make people use their brains. I was answering your question on nature! Say your poem for me. Please, Caesar, no. Why not? I don't have it with me. And you don't remember it? No. Tell me at least what it deals with. I spoke of... Well... No, I don't recall. Try. I spoke in it of a certain harmony between earth, between the earth and our feet. Yes, that's almost it. Say more. And also the outline of the Roman hills 
and the fugitive and heartbreaking peacefulness that comes with dusk. The cries of the swifts in the green skies. Yes. That's it again. Go on. That subtle moment when the sky, still full of gold, turns and in an instant shows us its other face full of shining stars. That smoky aroma of trees and waters that rises from the earth into the night. And the cricket's song and the way the heat comes down, the dogs, the sounds of the last chariot wheels, the voices of the peasants. The roads soaked in darkness under the gum trees and the olive groves. Yes. Yes. That's it again. But how did you know? I don't know. Perhaps it's because you and I love the same truths. Oh. oh, it doesn't matter. Because in me, everything turns to love. That is the virtue of noble hearts, Scipio. Oh, what I wouldn't give to know your clarity. But I know all too well my force of passion for life that can never be satisfied by nature. You could never understand that. You are purely for good, just as I am purely for evil. I can understand. No! This something in me, this pool of silence, these rotting weeds. Your poem will be beautiful. But if you want my opinion. Yes. It's all bloodless. Oh, you brute. You vile brute. You were just playing again. You were just playing me, eh? Pleased with yourself. There's some truth in what you say. I was playing. Oh, what a base and bloody heart you must have. How all that evil and hatred must torture you. That's enough. How I pity you. And how I loathe you. Shut up. And what an awful solitude yours must be. Solitude? Yeah. You think you know oh. so? and of the past. Those we have killed are still with us. And for all that, they are a simple matter. But those we have loved, those we have not loved but who loved us, the regrets, the desires, the bitterness and the sweetness, the whores and the gang of goddesses, alone, oh. If only instead of this poisoned solitude full of ghosts that is mine, I could feel truly alone. Know the silent <laughs> trembling of a tree. Solitude. But no, Scipio. It's peopled by gnashing of teeth and resounds with lost shouts and noises. And when I'm next to the women I caress and the night closes over us and I feel far from my finally sated body and I think I can hold a small piece of myself between life and death, my entire solitude fills up with the bitter odor of sex from the women sprawled at my side. Oh, men have some sweetness in their lives. It 
helps them go on. That's what they turn to when they feel too used up. It's true, Cynthia. Is there nothing in your life like that that brings you to tears? A silent refuge. There is. And what is it? Contempt. of truth. And grant us the strength to live at the table of these greatest of truths. Without 
prospects. Your boys have prospects. Thou, so empty and ardent, inhuman, yet so earthly, make us drunk on the wine of your sameness and satiate us forever within your soft black heart. Make us drunk on the wine of your sameness and satiate us forever within your soft black heart. Agreed. My children, your wishes shall be granted. Adoring me is fine, but enriching me is much better. <clears throat> Thank you. That's much better. If the gods had no other riches than the love of mortals, they'd be as poor as poor Caligula. Go now, gentlemen. Tell throughout the city of the amazing miracle that has been vouchsafed you to experience. You have looked upon Venus, and Venus has spoken to you. Go, quickly. A moment uh, as you leave. Uh, take the corridor to your right. I, I've posted sentries in the left-hand corridor to assassinate you. Oh. 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 the anarchist again, haven't you? You blaspheme Gaius! And what might that mean? You soil the heavens after you've drenched the earth in blood. This youngster is in love with big words. There you go again, my boy. At this moment, there are people dying in Rome for a speech of much less eloquent. I've decided to tell Gaius the truth. Well, well, Caligula. That's what's missing from your reign. A beautiful moralist. So, you believe in the gods, Scipio? No. Then why are you so quick to call out blasphemy? I can deny a thing without feeling I have to dirty it. Or take away other people's right to believe in it. But that's modesty. It is, that's true modesty. Oh, how I am happy for you, Scipio. And envious, you know, for that is perhaps the one feeling I shall never experience. It's not me you envy, but the gods! <laughs> if you will, that shall remain the one great secret of my reign. The only thing anyone can hold against me is I've just taken another small step toward power and freedom. For a man who loves power, there's something annoying in having the gods as rivals. So I've quashed that. I've proven to these illusory gods that a man can, if he has the will, ply their ridiculous trade. And that is blasphemy, Gaius. No, Scipio. It's clear-sightedness. What I've learned is what it takes to be the gods equal. It's enough to be as cruel as they are. You just have to be a tyrant. What is a tyrant? 
a blind soul. Don't be so sure, Scipio. A tyrant is a man who sacrifices whole peoples to his ideas or his ambitions. Me, I have no ideas and I brook no competition when it comes to power and freedom. If I use this power, it's to compensate. For what? For the gods' hatred and beastly behavior. Hatred cannot compensate for hatred. Power is no solution, and besides, I know of only one way to balance the world's hostilities. What's that? Poverty. Well, I'll have to try that too. Meanwhile, many people are dying all around you. Not so many, Scipio. Do you know how many wars I've not waged? No. Do you know why I refuse them? Because you don't care about the greatness of Rome! No! Because I respect human life! You're mocking me, Gaius! I respect it more than I do some ideal of conquest. It is true, I respect it no more than I respect my own life. If it's easy for me to kill, that's because it's not hard for me to die. No, Scipio, the, the more I think it over, the Sure, I am, that I am no tyrant. So what? If it cost us as much as if you were. If you could do sums, Scipio, you'd know that the least war undertaken by any reasonable tyrant would cost you a thousand times more than my fantastic caprices. But at least a war would make some sense. And the essential thing is to understand there's no way to understand fate. That is why I have become fate. I have put on the brute and incomprehensible face of the gods. That's what your colleagues from a moment ago have learned to worship. And that, too, is blasphemy, Gaius. No, Scipio, it's performance art. The mistake oh. most men make is not to believe sufficiently in theater. Otherwise, they know that any man can put on the face of the gods and play out the celestial tragedy. <laughs> All you gotta do is harden your heart. Perhaps you're right, Gaius. But if that is true, I believe you've done all that is needed <laughs> so that one day, all around you, legions of human gods will rise up implacable in their turn and drown your brief divinity in blood. Scipio. Believe it, Sazonia. You don't know how truly you've spoken, Scipio. I have done all that's needed. I have a hard time picturing the day you speak of, but I do dream it sometimes. And on all the faces that advance there from the depths of bitter night, on all the features twisted by hatred and fear, I do rejoice to recognize at last the only God I've ever worshiped in this world gutless and miserable as the human heart. Leave, Scipio. You've said far too much. I still have to paint my toenails. That's urgent. What do you need? Your job. Uh, Any news? 
Fucked up? Obviously the moon. Ah. It's coming along. It requires some patience. But first I must speak with you. I'm incredibly important. I may have some patience, Helicon, but I haven't got a lot of time. Speed it up. As I told you, I'm doing my best, but I have incredibly important matters to impart to you. Take it's note, I've already had her. Who? The moon. Naturally, but do you know they're plotting against your All life? All the same, I've had her. True, it was only two or three times, but all the same, I've had her. Well, I've been trying to tell you this. It was last you. summer, that evening, when I gazed upon her and stroked her along the garden column. She finally understood. Quit playing, Gaius. It is my job to speak too bad if you will not listen. This polish is quite useless. But to get back to the moon, huh? I was already in bed. She made a couple of moves on me. At first, she was all bloody, just above the horizon. She began to rise, becoming lighter and lighter, faster and faster. She grew paler. She became a lake of milk in that bitter night, strewn with stars nestling in her folds. She approached then, hot, sweet, light, and naked. She crossed the threshold of the room and slowly, Surely she came into my bed, covering me with her smiles and her glow. I'm going to need some new polish, Helicon. But you see, I can say without boasting that I've had her. Now will you listen to what is threatening your life? I want nothing but the moon, Helicon. I already know what's going to kill me. What I haven't done is exhausted all the things that can make me live. That is why I want the moon. Don't bother coming back here until you've got her for me. Very well, I will do my duty. And say what I've got to say. A plot has risen against you. Caria is the leader. I, I happened upon this document, which contains the essential information. And I'll leave it here. And Where are you going? To seek out the moon for you. May I, Gaius? Oh, uh, all right. Uh, so, sweetie pie, uh, back for another eyeful of Venus. No, no, it's not that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, um, forgive me. You know how much I, I love you, and there's nothing that, that, that I want except to end my days in peace. Spit it out! Well, that's the point. It's very serious. It's not serious. Well, well, what then, Caius? What are we talking about, my love? Not in the least Guys, serious. They want to kill you. Do you want to know why I cannot believe you? Kill the gods. Don't swear. Above all else, don't swear. It's better to listen. If what you were saying were true, I, I'd be forced to suppose you're betraying your friends. Guys, no? it is my love for you. I cannot believe that. I've so detested villains that I've never been able to stop myself from having a traitor put to <gasps> death. I know well how good you are. I'm sure you want neither to betray nor to die. No, of course not. You're not a villain. No, everyone knows that. Nor a traitor. No, of course, that's impossible. Consequently, there's no plot. Tell me it was just a little joke. That's obvious. No one wants to kill you. That's obvious. <laughs> now, disappear, sweetie. A man of honor is so rare an animal that I can scarcely stand looking at him for very long. I must remain alone to savor this grand moment.
Bring me Caria. <laughs> A moment. With respect. You decided you'd be logical, you idiot. is to know where that will end up. If they brought you the moon, everything would be different, eh? The impossible would become possible, and by the same stroke, everything would be transfigured, eh? Why not, Caligula? Who knows? There are fewer and fewer people around me. That's curious. Too many dead, that thins them out. <laughs> Even if they do bring me the moon, I can never go back. Even if the dead came back to tremble once more under the sun's caress, the murders would anyway not go back under the ground. Logic, Caligula. You have to follow your logic. Power as far as it will go. Willfulness to the very end. No. There's no going back. You must follow it through till it's done. You called me, guys. God! Bring torches. You had something in particular you wanted to tell me. No, Korea. Are you certain my presence is required? Absolutely sure. Forgive me, I was distracted. I've received you inhospitably. Come, let us reason together as friends. I, I'm in need of speaking for a little with someone intelligent. Correa, do you think two men whose souls and senses of pride are equal can speak to one another at least once in their lives? from their whole hearts, as if they stood before one another naked, uh, stripped of their prejudices, private interests, and the lies they live with. I believe that is possible, but I don't think you can. You're right. I only want to know if you agree with me. So, let us resort to our masks. Use our <coughs> lies, we'll speak as we fence covered over with protective gear. Correa, why do you not love me? Because there's nothing lovable about you, guys! And because you cannot command love, and because I know you too well, you cannot hide the face you're trying to mask in yourself. Then why hate me? That you, you lose yourself, quiet. I, I don't hate you. I, I find you pernicious and cruelly detestable and vain. But I cannot hate you because I don't think you're happy. And I cannot despise you because I know you are not a coward. Then why do you want to kill me? I already told you I find you pernicious. 
logic don't go hand in hand. Oh, true. It's not logical. Huh, it's sane. Uh, go on. I have nothing more to say. I, I don't want to enter into your logic. I, I don't want to. You just mess me up all the time. I, I don't got it. All of that is very legitimate and very clear. Even obvious to most. Uh, but not to you. You're intelligent, and intelligence you either pay dearly for or you deny. Myself, I pay. But you, why will you neither pay its price nor deny it? Because I have a desire to, to live and, and be happy. I don't believe you can do either by taking absurdities all the way to their final consequences. I'm like everybody else. In order to feel that I'm free, I, I sometimes wish harm to those I love and, and covet women who to love the set of me. Friendship forbid me to want to be logical. I should, I should kill or I should ravish. But I consider these thoughts to be inconsequential. So, you believe in some superior notion? I believe that, that some acts are, are more beautiful than others. I believe they're all the same. I know, Gaius. And that's why I don't hate you. But you're a menace and you've got to go. True enough. But why tell me and risk your life? Because others would take my place. And because I don't like lying. Gwen, do you think two men whose souls and senses of pride are equal can speak to one another at least once in their lives from their whole hearts, as if they stood before one another naked, stripped of their prejudices, private interests, and the lies they live with? I think that's what we've just been doing. Right, Carrie Ann. Yeah, you thought me incapable of it. Oh, I was wrong. I salute you, I thank you. And now I await your sentence. My sentence? Oh, you mean, do you recognize this, Caria? I was aware that you had that. Right. And your fr frankness itself was a pretense. The two men have not been speaking from their whole hearts. This is the only evidence. I'm leaving, guys. I don't want to play this grimacing game. I know it too well, and I'm tired of it. Stay. This is the only evidence, is it not? I never thought you needed evidence to condemn a man to death. True enough. Yet, yeah, this one time I wish to contradict myself. But it won't bother anyone, and besides, it's so good occasionally to contradict oneself. It's, it's restful, and I need rest, Carrie. I don't understand, and I have no taste for these complications. Of course not. You're a sane man. You want nothing out of the ordinary. You want to live and be happy, that's all. I think it's best if we just leave it at that. Not yet. A little patience, if you will. This is the only evidence. I shall assume I cannot condemn you to death without it. You see, conspirator, it burns. And as this evidence disappears, a new innocence dawns on your face. How lovely, an innocent man, how lovely. Admire my power, Kia. Not even the gods can restore innocence without punishment first. And your emperor needs no more than a flame to absolve you and give you heart. 
Go on, Correa. Follow to the very end this magnificent reasoning you've laid out for me. Your emperor awaits his repose. This is his way to live and be happy. What do you want with me? Oh, we haven't got much time. We must be strong to do what we must do. Who's told you I'm not? You weren't at the meeting yesterday. True, Correa. Scipio, I am older than you, and I'm not in the habit of asking for help. But the truth is, I need you. This murder needs men of honor to sponsor it, and you and I are the only ones from amongst all the wounded vanities and ignoble anxieties. You and I are the only ones with pure motive. I know that if you do not go with us, you will not betray us. But that is a matter of indifference. What I want is for you to remain with us. I understand, but I swear to you, I cannot do it. Are you with him, then? No, but I cannot be against him. If I were to kill him, my heart at the least would be with him. And he killed your father. Yes. That's where it all begins, but that's also where it all ends. Mm, he negates everything you believe in. He mocks what you hold sacred. True, Correa, but still, there may be something in me that is like him. The same flame burns in our hearts. The time has come to choose. For myself, I've silenced anything in me that resembles him. I cannot choose. Because besides what I suffer, I also suffer what he does. My trouble is I understand it all. You've chosen then to think he's right. Oh. I beg you, Correa. For me, no one, no one will ever be right again. You know I hate him even more for all he's done to you, Scipio. Yes. He's taught me to expect everything. No, he's taught you to despair. And to lead a young soul into despair is a crime beyond all the others that he's committed. I swear to you, it's enough to make me kill him in a fury. I've been looking for you, Carrier. Caius is planning a small friendly meeting for here he must attend. But he has no need for you, my dove. Correa. Yes, Scipio. Try to understand. No, Scipio. But really, why does he want us at this hour of the night? <clears throat> See? There! If it's to execute us like the others, there's no need for this fuss. Sit down, old Nino. Be seated. Uh, they uh, don't know anything. That is obvious. That's right, my sweetie. It's obvious. <laughs> we should have acted sooner. I knew it. Now it's the torture rooms for us. What's going on? Our conspiracy has been discovered. And torture. Oh, I recall. But Caligula once gave any 1,000 sesterces to a thieving slave who refused to confess under torture. Oh, that helps a lot. No, but it shows you he honors courage and you do well to keep that in mind. Would you mind? Stop rattling your feet I like said that. Stop. Sit down, put me on edge. You're not bound to our lives are at stake. Do you know Caligula's favorite expression? Yes, he tells the torturer, kill him slowly so he knows it feels like. No, there's a better one. After an execution, he yawns and says, in all seriousness, what I admire most is my imperturbability. Do you hear? That remark reveals his weakness. Stop philosophizing! It drives me crazy! Well, at least recognize that this man wields an unbelievable influence. He forces us to think. He forces everyone to think. Feel insecure? That makes you think, and that's why so many hatreds pursue him. Look! Oh, maybe you're right. Oh, this is crazy. I do not.
not want to die. No. <laughs> inform you that he has always brought you here for affairs of state. But today he has invited you to commune with him by sharing an artistic emotion. <laughs> he has also added who, that whomever has not communed with him in this manner shall have his head removed. Forgive me for Assisting. But I am to ask whether or not you found this dance beautiful. It was beautiful, Sasonia. Yes, Sasonia. It was beautiful. And you, Caria? It was great art. Perfect. Now I can so inform Caligula. Tell me, Caria, do you really believe that that was a great art? In a sense, <laughs> yes. I understand. You are very strong, false as only an honest man can be, but strong truly. Me, I am not so strong, and yet I will not let you put your hands on Caligula, even if that is what he wants himself. I have no idea what you're talking about, but I must admit I just have to congratulate you on your devotion. I love a good domestic. <laughs> You're very proud, aren't you? Hmm? Yes, I am a fool, but you, what are you? Virtue incarnate? Hmm? I'll tell you what I think about that. Hmm? See, I was born a slave, and so I first learned the dance of virtue, my honest man, under the lash. Now Caius, he made no grand speeches. He freed me, brought me into his house, and that is how I've been able to observe you, you virtuous men, and I saw that you look nasty and you smell bad. You have that stale odor of men who have never risked anything, never suffered a day in their lives. But I've seen you nobly clad, but with usury in your hearts, greed in your faces, the hands of pickpockets, you be his judges. You who make a business of virtue, who dream of security the way a teenage girl dreams of love. You who will most likely die in uh, terror without knowing you never lived a day in your entire lives. Meddlers! You would judge one who suffered more than you can imagine, who bleeds each day from new wounds, my sweetie. Tap. Well, you'll have to go through him first. You can be sure of that. <laughs> Despise the slave Korea. He is greater than you because he can still love the miserable master whom he will defend against your noble lies and perjury. Dear her Peloton, you have allowed yourself to slip into eloquence. <laughs> Frankly, you used to have better taste. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't know what I, uh, it, it must come from hanging out with you so much. Old married couples resemble each other. I take it back. I'm sorry. I take it all back. Please forget I said anything. Just simply, uh, s simply look at this face. Observe it well. Good. You have now seen the face of your enemy. 
And now we really do have to move quickly. The two of you, stay here. Tonight there will be a hundred of us. Stay here. Stay here. I could go myself. The smells of death. Or lies. I said the dance was beautiful. It was, in a way. <laughs> what is it? Do you know? Yeah, the I emperor think. has come here. He brought us here for the dance. What dance? The artistic emotion. I heard Caligula is very ill. Yes. What's the matter with him? Is he going to die? I don't think so. His illnesses are deadly only for others. <laughs> I understand. But doesn't he have any illness that could be more to our advantage? No. His illness doesn't brook any other competitor. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to see Correa. Something wrong with his stomach. Oh. He vomited blood. Oh. 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 oh, powerful gods, I swear! If he is cured, I will pour 200,000 sesterces into the state treasury! No idea how deeply touched I am. So you love me. Oh, Caesar, there's nothing I would not do for you on the spot. Ah, Lepidus, I, I do not deserve such love. I tell you, I'm not worthy. Take him. Go, my friend. And remember that Caligula has given you his heart. Where are they taking me? Why, to your death, of course. No! You've offered your life in place of mine. I, I already feel better. I don't even have that frightful taste of blood in my mouth anymore. You've cured me. Aren't you glad, my friend, that you can give your life for another when that other is called Caligula? I don't want to. It was just a joke. Soon. The sea lane shall be covered with mimosa blossoms. Ah! The women will don their lightest dresses. Ah! A great cool sky scudding above. Ah! The smiles of life. Ah! Life, my friend. If you had loved it enough, you would not have gambled it away so imprudently. And when you lose, you have to. A lovely idea that's just occurred to me. I'd like to share it with you. My reign up until now has been too happy. We've had no universal plague, no religious persecution, not even a coup d'etat. In short, nothing that would make you all go down in history. What I'm trying to say is I'm going to make up for the caution of the fates. I don't know if you've understood me, but it is I who have replaced the plague. Here's Korea. Your turn, Caesarnia. Caligula is dead. Try 
tragedy. He was dancing but an hour ago. Exactly. The effort killed him. You're not saying anything, Carrier. It was a great misfortune to Sonia. Well played, Carrier. Well, that didn't work. Don't forget what I told you. Is he really ill, Sonia? Oh, no, my pretty. What? What you don't know is that the man sleeps two hours a night. And the rest of the time, since he cannot rest, he wanders through the galleries of his palace. What you don't know, what you've never even asked yourselves is, what does this creature think about during the dead hours of the night between midnight and the sun's return? Ill? No, he's not ill. Well, not at least until you invent a name for the sores that cover his soul. You're right, Sasonia. None of us are blind. No! Guy is... You are not blind to his pain. But, like all others who lack a soul, you can't stand someone with too much. Too much soul. That's what gets you, isn't it? So you call it a disease. And the rest of you oafs feel justified and happy. Have you ever known love, Carrier? Oh, well, we're too old to learn now, Sasonia. And besides, there's no guarantee that Caligula will give us the time to do so. <laughs> True. And I was about to forget to do as Caligula asked. You know that today is a day dedicated to art. According to the calendar. No, according to Caligula. He has called together several poets. He will propose that they will improvise a poem on the theme that he sets. He mentioned young Scipio and Metellus in particular. But we're not ready! Naturally, there will be prizes and penalties. But I can tell you in confidence, they are not that severe. Everything ready? Everything. Bring in the poets. And the others? Oh, Scipio. Metellus. Subject, death. Time limit, one minute. I will. It's not sufficient. Oh, is that sufficient? Will you be taking part in the contest yourself, Gaius? Useless. I long ago composed my piece on the subject. May I get a coffee? In my own way, I recite it every day. Something bothers you about my looks. What? I beg your pardon. I... Oh, please. No humility. Above all else, no humility. You're already hard to take, but humility. I continue. It's the only piece I've ever made, but even so, it proves I'm the only artist Rome has ever known. The only one you understand whose thoughts and actions are one. That's just a matter of power. Right, Correa. Others create because they have no power. Myself, I have no need to make art. I live it. The rest of you, ready? I yes, so. Guys, 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 guys. I shall whistle. The first one begins to read. I shall whistle again. The first is to stop. The second begins, and so on and so forth. Naturally, the winner will be the one whose 
composition is not interrupted by a whistle. Be ready. There must be organization in all things, even in art. Gaius. 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 Death went beyond the Black River. Gaius. 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 The three fates in their caves, one for the one. Guys, 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 guys. Oh, death, I call upon thee as we are reminded. Guys, 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 guys. Since I was a little child, no. What does the child of an imbecile have to do with the subject? Can you tell me the connection? Guys, I have not finished, and then naturally the connection happened here. <laughs> right, right. Oh, guys. Guys, 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 abstruse, diffuse prayer beneath the vault. Guys, 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 guys. Inexorable. She go oh, fuck. Your turn, Scipio. No tablet. I don't need one. Please. <coughs> Pursuit of happiness that clarifies heaven flooded with sun, soul, and savage festivals, my delirium without hope, taken by the maggots Please for what they are. stop. You're very young for one who understands the lessons of death. I was very young for one who lost his father. All right. The rest of you fall in line. A false hope is far too harsh a punishment for my taste. I had thought up until now of keeping you on as my allies. Perhaps I envisioned you as my final line of defense. But I can see that was a vain wish, so I am rejecting you and throwing you back amongst my enemies. You will march out in good order. As you pause before me, you will lick your tablets to efface the infamous rot you've written on them. Attention! Forward! March! The rest of you leave. The time has come. Can you not leave me alone in peace as your father does? Go on, guys. I know already you've made your choice. Leave me alone. I will, in fact, leave you alone. Since I believe I have understood you, neither for you nor for me, who am so much like you, is there any way out. I'm going far away to seek out what all this means. Goodbye, dear guys. When all this 
is over. Do not forget. I loved you. What did he say? You wouldn't understand. What are you thinking? About him. About you. It all comes to the same thing. What's the matter? Scipio's gone. Friendships are done. But you, uh, I ask myself, why are you still here? Because I please. No. If I'd had you killed, I think I would understand. That would be one solution. So do it. But can you for one minute allow yourself to live freely? It's been years already. I've made a practice of living freely. That's not what I mean. Understand me well. It can be so good to live in love with a pure heart. Everyone gets his purity however he can. For me, it's by pursuing the essential. Anyway, all, all that won't prevent me from having you killed. That would be the crowning moment on this path. It's funny. When I do not kill, I feel alone. The living do not suffice to people the earth and dispel my boredom. Everywhere I look, I sense an emptiness beyond measure. Only among my dead do I feel well. Look at them. They're, they're for real. They're like me. They're expecting me, urging me on. I have long talks with this one or that one who begs me for a pardon or whose tongue I had cut out. Rest your head in my hand. You are well. Silence everywhere. You exaggerate. Don't you hear the clanking of steel? Don't you hear the thousand rustling sounds of hatred on the brow? No one would tear. Stupidity would. Stupidity doesn't kill. It makes people tame. She's a murderer, Cesaria. She's a murderer when she thinks she's been offended. Oh. It won't be the ones whose sons or fathers I've killed who will assassinate me. They're the ones who've understood. They have the same taste in their mouths. But those I've mocked, those I've made to look ridiculous, I, I have no defense against their vanity. Oh, we will defend you. There are still many who love you. Fewer and fewer of you. I've done enough to be sure of that. And to be fair, there's also the loyalty and the courage of those who want to be happy that's against me. They will not kill you. Or else something will come down from the heavens and destroy them before they can touch you. The heavens. There are no heavens, you poor woman. Why so much love and concern all of a sudden? It's not part of our agreement.
it's not enough that I should watch you kill the others. I have to know that you too will be killed. It's not enough that I welcome you cruel and torn up inside and that I breathe in the odor of murder when you lie on top of me. Every day I watch what is human and you die a little more. I am old and almost ugly, I know, but my concern for you has turned me into the kind of soul that it doesn't matter that you don't love me. All I want, all I want is to see you heal. You're still a boy. There's a whole life ahead of you. And what is it that you want that's greater than a whole life? You've been around a long time now. Too long. But you'll keep me around, won't you? I don't know. What I do know is why you're here. For those long nights when the pleasure was sharp and joyless, and for all you know of me, I am 29, not very old, but at this moment, when my life feels anyhow so full, so laden with rags of the past, so finished, you are the last witness, and I cannot help but feel a kind of shameful tenderness for the old woman you'll be. Tell me you'll keep I don't know. What I do know, and this is the most terrifying, is that the shameful tenderness is the only pure feeling I've ever had in this world. Wouldn't it be better if the last witness disappeared? That doesn't matter. I am happy hearing what you said. Why can I not share this happiness with you? Who says I'm not happy? Happiness is generous. It doesn't live to destroy. Then there are two kinds of happiness. And I have chosen the murderer's kind. Because I am happy. There was a time when I thought I had come to the furthest reaches of pain. But no, you can always go further. Beyond that place, there is a sterile and magnificent happiness. Look at me. I laugh when I think that for years the whole of Rome avoided saying the name Drusilla. Because for all those years, Rome was wrong. Love is not enough for me. That's what I've understood. It's what I understand again now as I look at you. think that a man suffers because one day the being he loves dies. But his real suffering is less futile. It's to learn that grief doesn't last either. Even sorrow is meaningless. You see, I had no excuse. Neither the shadow of love nor the bitterness of melancholy. I have no alibi. Here, I am freer than I've been for years, freed as I am from memory and illusion. I know that nothing lasts. To know that, there are only two or three in all of history who have ever experienced this, achieved this mad happiness. You have followed to its end the most curious tragedy, Sazonia. And now, it's time the curtain falls on you. Yes. 
actually freedom. Without it, I would have been a satisfied man. Thanks to it, I have achieved the divine clairvoyance of loneliness. I live, I kill, I exercise the delirious power of the destroyer, <clears throat> after which that of the creator seems that of a monkey. <gasps> this is happiness, this insufferable deliverance, this universal contempt, the blood, the self-hatred, the unparalleled isolation of the man who holds all life under his gaze, the inordinate joy of the murderer who is not caught, the implacable logic that crushes human lives, that crushes you, Sazonia, to perfect at last the eternal solitude that I desire. Short, dear Sazonia. And you too were guilty. But to kill is no solution. Caligula. You too, you too, you are guilty. What of it? A little more, a little less? But who would dare condemn me in this world without judge where no one is innocent? You can see it. Helicon hasn't come. I'm not going to have the moon. How bitter to be right and to have to go through with it to the end because I'm afraid of the end. The clash of arms. Innocence preparing its triumph. I, I wish I were in their place. I, I'm afraid. How disgusting. After having despised the others to discover the same cowardice in my soul. It doesn't matter. Fear doesn't last either. I will regain the vast emptiness where the heart hardens. Everything seems so complicated. Everything is so simple, however. If they brought me the moon, if, if love were enough, uh, everything would have changed. But where? To Quench this thirst. What heart, what God could have for me the profundity of a lake? Nothing in this world, nor in any other that's up to my demands. I know, however, and you know it too, that it would be enough if the impossible were to be. The impossible, I, I've searched for it to the ends of the earth, in the confines of myself. I've stretched out my hands, and it's you I meet. Always you looking at me, and I am for you full of hate. <laughs> I 
didn't take the road I needed to. I ended up nowhere. My liberty isn't real. won't come. We will all be guilty forever. Oh, this night is heavy as human pain. It's a history. Caligula. To history. I'm still alive. 